it's Nana Rabina here and today I'm actually with Elisa. So Elisa has some um, sleep issues, some feeding issues associated with sleep I guess with baby Leah who is how old? She's three months. Oh three months and here she goes. Oh. Okay so baby Leah is three months and tell me what the problem is that you're having. So I'm finding at night time I when I breastfeed her, she'll fall asleep, but I can't put her down in her bassinet without feeding her first. Oh. So I put her down pretty well, completely asleep, and then she wakes up within 40 minutes, and then I have to do the whole process over again. Okay. And how about her daytime feeding? How does that work? Hey. Uh, daytime, she feeds roughly two to three hours, and it's the same for naps. Usually, she'll end up falling asleep on me, and I'll burp her while she's still asleep. And then I put her in the sling or I put her in the playpen and she stays asleep like that. Sometimes I can get an hour and a half out of her. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Don't tell, don't, tell, don't tell them too much because <laughs> let me tell you, you're going to upset a lot of mommies out there whose babies are only doing 30 minutes. But then there are other days where I can't get her down at all. Well, it turns yeah. out she's been asleep on me longer than I thought. And yeah. by the time I put her down, her nap is over. So, so let me tell you, um, you probably know because I know you're on my Facebook, um, that a big part of my business is doing sleep consultations. So for those of you that don't know, I don't even have a count of how many I've done. Thousands and thousands. Um, a big part of my business is trying to actually get babies to sleep without doing the crying out, without rocking and putting them down. And one of the ways is to start early. So what I actually practice is scheduling the baby's feed so that the baby feeds when she wakes, not when she sleeps. And for me, this is the reason. When a baby falls asleep and is feeding, often they won't have a full feed. And then you're forced to get up perhaps more often than you would like through the night because she hasn't fed four feeds and she's constantly feeding at night. It's almost like a toddler, you know. Uh, we've become a nation of constantly feeding. So it's breakfast, goldfish. Lunch, goldfish. Dinner, goldfish. So what happens is with Leah, she has, you know, she has a milk and then she has a top-up and then she has a top-up. She never has a full, full feed. So how long would a full feed be when you're breastfeeding her? She's a pretty quick feeder. Maybe 15 minutes would be okay. a full feed. So that's an empty breast. Yeah. Pretty much. Okay, so that's good. And I would have said that that was probably 10 to 15 minutes is where it would actually be. And so what we want to do is we want to try and get Leah to start going to sleep without breastfeeding. <laughs> so, hi. Well, you seem happy about hearing that. You may not be so happy when we try it. I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> yeah. So what we'll do then is I'm going to show you a couple of exercises that we can do to have her settle herself without constantly needing to feed. And what I would suggest then is we go on a schedule where we feed on waking, not on sleeping. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons being is, well, babies are happy when they've had a good sleep. So she would probably feed better anyway. She's awake, she's not sleepy, and she'll have a better feed, okay? So that's what we'll work on. Um, in terms of how we can eliminate the falling to sleep and being breastfed to sleep all the time is you introduce another bad habit. I know it's, it really does sound a little bit ass upwards, so to speak. Mm -hmm. But what you do is you're forgiven for doing anything else to get her to sleep other than breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. So what we would do is you can rock her, you can bounce her, you can do other things. We get her to sleep and taking away those sleep inhibitors that we've introduced will actually be be much easier. What we have conquered is her need to actually breastfeed to sleep all the time. Now Leah's three months so she's still tiny but there's going to be some times that you can breastfeed her obviously to sleep and we'll just wean it away slowly slowly so she sleeps better at night and feeds better through the day. That sounds good. Okay <laughs> so we're going to go up to the nursery check us out. Okay, so Elisa, there's a couple of things that you can do. One of the exercises I want to show you um, I mean, we could give her a quick pinch so she starts fussing, but I'm not that mean. I can do <laughs> so it. So whatever you are doing, I'll touch her that. nose. That's all it takes. <laughs> really? She doesn't yeah, like she it. Does not oh like my me. goodness. But one of the exercises is to have her on your shoulder with your hand around her back. Okay. And there we go. Okay. There we go. And to do squats. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're going to have a kick ass ass. <laughs> You're going to have good for great me. pair of thighs. So you get your exercise in. But this is actually a very good exercise to actually do with babies that are really, really fussing. You'll find that she actually will stop fussing and crying down. Now, instead of breastfeeding her to sleep, so that's one of the things you can do to calm her down while she's getting fussy, then we would put her 
into the crease. So it'd be slow, right? And you can do, you find the motion that suits her, but for the most part, yeah, it would be about this. It would be calm. You know, I don't want you to be a, a kangaroo. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that wouldn't be a calm. So fairly calm. And then we will put her down. Okay. And we'll okay. put all the lights. And now, for all the YouTube watchers, obviously we're in a very bright room right now for um, uh, for filming. But what I would recommend is that the room is very, very dark for a sleeping baby. I'm a great believer that brain activity is caused through daylight. I mean, daylight tells us to be awake, dark tells us to be asleep, right? So once she actually settles down, she started to, you know, fast and go, what I would suggest then is, hey, is I'm just gonna move her mattress a little. So I would bounce her mattress, whether she was in a crib or a bassinet, just a little bit of movement, shh, and then she'll start to go to sleep. Unfortunately, she's not actually fussing up a storm at the moment, so, um, She's probably just going to be a really good baby and go to sleep. <laughs> so then we would just, shh, just, you want to have a little go with that? Want to have sure. a little try? So just giving her a little bit, just a little bit of movement if she was fussing. When she starts to really fuss then, you would pick her up, do the squats, put her back down again. Until she falls. And you okay. can rock her. And you would keep doing various exercises there to get her calm other than giving in to the breast to sleep. Mm -hmm. Okay. But what if she's like this, where she looks wide awake and like she's never going to go to sleep? I'm glad you said that because for all you mommies out there, Bless let me you. tell you, a lot of the time babies don't show us signs of sleep. And if they do, it can literally be like this. It'll be, I hope she didn't see that. Honest to goodness, I swear that's what they do. So they don't always show you a sign. I tend to schedule based on the baby's age. So the fact that Leah is a year and a, a year and a half, the fact that Leah is three months, she probably wouldn't want to be awake more than an hour and a half. Mm. If she's awake hitting two, two and a half hours, she may kick up a storm because she's overtired. If you're putting her down before an hour and a half, she may kick up a storm because she's not tired enough. So I tend to schedule based on age. Now, every baby's different. Yeah. So what I would do if I was consulting with you is you would be logging, going back with me, put her in the crib at nine, she fell asleep at 9.45. The next day I may make adjustment based on what time she actually slept. So we tweak and tweak until we get to the part where we figured out what is a good time for Leah to actually sleep. So what I would recommend moving forward with baby Leah is you would put the blinds down, make sure the room is extremely dark and it's slightly on the cooler side. One of the reasons being if the air gets too dry, she'll get a stuffed up nose. Babies always sleep better in a cooler room. If you're ever nervous that she's actually gonna be too cool, then one of the things that you wanna do is perhaps just put a sleep blanket on her, you know, a sleep sack, sorry, okay. um, or an extra pair of pajamas if you feel that she's cold, but you could definitely go for a cooler room. Um, I'll tell you something else I want to clarify because I had a client call me once and say, Nanny Rabina, the room was so dark, I poked the damn baby in the eye last night. I'm like, okay, so let's get this clear. <laughs> the baby is going to be in the dark for sleeping. So when you come to change a diaper or feed him, by all means, put a nightlight on. I don't want you searching and poking her in the eye. Okay, so keep that in mind. We just want dark for good sleep. Okay, this is Nanny Rabina and I'll see you next time.